It is my pleasure to welcome you all to our official renaming ceremony of the Riverton School to the Gerald E. Talbot Community School. My name is Ann Hanna and I am the principal and I am so happy that you are all here today to join us whether live in person or streaming from the home to help us celebrate this momentous and important event. We have some very special guests here with us this, here with us this morning to help make this occasion um, as special as it can be for Mr. Talbot and for all of our community. First, I'd like to invite Commissioner Macon, who is here from the state of Maine, who would like to say a few words. Good morning, everybody. I am so grateful for this opportunity to share in the joyful, optimistic renaming of Riverton Elementary to Gerald E. Talbot Community School. Yay. Fitting. It is fitting to select a school because education is our best hope for society where civil rights and equity triumph over discrimination, privilege, hatred, fear, and all of the other byproducts of ignorance. Representative Talbot, I am grateful for your many courageous contributions both nationally and here in our state. I'm grateful for the inspiration and the shining example that you have provided for all of us. And I'm grateful on behalf of the thousands of children who will pass through the doors of the Gerald E. Talbot Community School and who will know by its name that they are entering a place of learning and of respect and of infinite hope. May they receive here a foundational recognition of their limitless individual and collective value of their vast potential and may they emulate your unshakable courage and your commitment to public service. Our next speaker is Portland's Mayor, Kate Snyder. Welcome, Mayor Snyder. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Talbot. <laughs> I'm honored to be with you here today. Thank you for including me. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize and thank Gerald E. Talbot. Mr. Talbot, the decision to main, rename this wonderful school in your honor was made some time ago, before our life as we know it, in an environment of COVID-19, before national and local protests in response to horrific crimes committed against people of color. These are unsettled times in our city, our state, and our country. Renaming Riverton School, the Gerald E. Talbot School, is timely, it's important, and it's an opportunity to talk about your service, your commitment, and your steady leadership as a lifelong advocate for civil and human rights on the local, state, and national levels. Your service has made positive meaningful and long-lasting changes for which we are grateful. As we as a city, state, and country make our way through new days and continued challenges, I look to you and your service as inspiration. And I'm encouraged to know that members of your family continue your legacy of service, locally and at the state level. Mr. Talbot, thank you again. Congratulations on having this wonderful school renamed in your honor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jerry. It is a privilege and an honor to be here today, and it was a privilege and an honor to have casted my vote in support of renaming the school to recognize Mr. Gerald Talbot. How fitting it is that in 2020, when so many of us have been asked to make personal sacrifices for the greater good, that we recognize the work and the career of Mr. Talbot. In Portland Public Schools, our tagline is to prepare and empower our youth to be contributing members of our society. 
Preparing and empowering is what Mrs. Albert represents to me as an elected person of color in a predominantly white state. He's been an inspiration to me. I can't tell you how many times I've had mentors tell me the influence that Mr. Talbot has had on them and how that's been transferred over to me. Often, after a difficult school board meeting, contentious issues, I'll have the occasional positive feedback saying, you looked so calm and you looked so poised while you were there navigating a really challenging discussion. And I look back at the example that Mr. Talbot has set that allows me to operate in that way. We're deeply grateful for your contributions to the state and city, and I'm personally deeply grateful to have you in my life as a mentor and as someone that I look up to and I try to emulate in my everyday life. Thank you so much, Mr. Talbot. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. Um, could it be more awkward that we're all having to take off our masks, put on our masks, clean our microphones? Um, I want to thank all of the speakers today. We're incredibly grateful for all of your leadership and commitment to the Portland Public Schools. Um, we can't thank you enough. I also want to thank our friends in the media who are here uh, this morning. Um, we're grateful to you as well for bringing visibility to this important transition for the Riverton community, the Portland Public Schools, the City of Portland, and the State of Maine. Thank you, Principal Ann Hanna, for your leadership here at Talbot. You lead an amazing group of educators who already reflect the teachings of Mr. Talbot. So it's so fitting that we're here to make it official by renaming the Riverton Elementary School as the Gerald E. Talbot Community School. Our equity goal as a district calls on us to support each and every student in their particular path while being vigilant about the systemic and ongoing inequities that exist. And that is exactly what Jerry Talbot has done his whole life. He is a living, breathing exemplar of what it means to be vigilant about inequities. As a legislator, as a community leader, as an educator, as a person, Gerald Talbot has made sure that repaying the educational debts to black, indigenous, and people of color remains visible and central to policymakers in this state and beyond. Our work here at Talbot, indeed our work as a school district, has been and must continue to be to remove the barriers to opportunity that limit our students' potential and no place reflects that spirit better than the Gerald E. Talbot faculty, staff, and community. Over the past five years, Talbot has out outpaced the district in removing those barriers to achievement and opportunity. The tireless dedication of this faculty honors and continues the work that has been Jerry Talbot's life's work. We're immensely proud to have this opportunity to honor you, Jerry, for your life's work. We're incredibly happy that you're able to be with us here today, and we're very much looking forward to having many more opportunities, especially after this pandemic is over, to have you continue to teach our students about that life and that work. Nothing could be more important today than helping our children to understand that racism and oppression are not new phenomena in this country. That racism and oppression have been around for over 400 years and are in fact the cornerstones of the American experience, particularly for black and indigenous people and people of color. But it's also important for them to see that progress has been made and that it's people like you and like them that have helped to make that progress real. Nothing could be more important than to help our students to see your work, what it entails, and that it's their responsibility to continue and to build on that work. Today we take a step to continue your work by honoring it with this renaming. Tomorrow we continue your work by tirelessly removing those barriers to opportunity for all of our students 
and giving them the tools they need to continue to change the world for the better as you have done. Thank you. I am so proud to welcome you, Mr. Talbot. If you would like to come up and say a few words to our audience. Oh. <laughs> Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. There's something I still cannot believe. Good morning, everybody. It is with a humble honor that John, that join you today and offer my deepest gratitude to people of Portland, the Portland Board of Education, and the Portland City Council. Oh, it better if I can get up here, the sun is in my eyes. For the opportunity to join you in a new era for the school and community, with special thank you. I thank so many people. <clears throat> the only thing I can remember is when my grandson, I used to have to bring him to school. I used to have to drive him to school many years ago. He doesn't want to tell me how many years ago. <laughs> but I used to drive him to school. This, was, this is the school. The Riverton community of students, parents, families, staff, teachers, and all of those who care about and are contributors to this incredible school family. It is absolutely incredible. I still can't believe it. I, I'm still trying to get it in my mind. What is going on? How can I do that? I went to school in Bangor. I went to five schools in Bangor. The first school, third street school, has been torn down. Lagos Street School has been torn down. The Hannibal Hammond School has been torn down. So there's only two of that left. Bangor High School and Fifth Street Junior High School. And I put my education into those and got myself in a pretty good situation. Well, I followed them through. <clears throat> I went to the Hannibal Hamlin School, and when I got to the fourth grade, I found out that for me to get to the next grade, I had to stay back. They, I had to go to what they call the dumb class. So the next year I went to the dumb class and I've never forgotten that. And it's held me, it held me back and I got so that when I was a senior at Bangor High School, I couldn't play my last year there. I couldn't play because I had too much time. So I couldn't play. That hurt me, and I've never, ever forgotten it. When I got to Bangor High School, <clears throat> and when I was a senior, I had three subjects. And a man stopped me. One of the history teachers stopped me and said, Jerry, i got to speak to you for a minute. Yep, what's up? He said, you've got to do better than what you're doing now. Because if you don't do better now, 
you'll never find a job. You can't get a job. I said, are you right? Yeah. So I took three more subjects. And guess what? I graduated on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I graduated on Friday the 13th. And I'll always be proud of that. I'll always be proud of that. I then moved to Portland. What am I going to do? When you graduate from high school, the rest of the world is yours. You can do with what you want. So what do I do? I moved to Portland. I moved to Portland, and one night in 1963, the phone rang. I answered it, and a man on the other end says, wait a minute. He said, how would you like to go to Washington, D.C.? I said, wait a minute. I can't do that. I don't have that kind of money. I have my wife, and I have two children. Oh, you can. You can do that. I'll send you the information on that. It's called the March on Washington. I said, I'll go. I said, I'll go. But then I asked my wife, I asked my job, I said, go. You go. And I went. I went to that March on Washington. And I was with John Lewis. Representative John Lewis, who just passed away. And believe it or not, I followed him all my life without knowing it. Without knowing it. I helped. I almost went to ministry school, didn't get there. So it's, you never, never know what you're going to run into. So what I did, I joined the Army. I joined the Army, and without realizing it, I wasn't in there that long. They sent me overseas during the Korean War. Well, what, 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 what do you mean? They sent me overseas. Now, I'm going to give you something to guess on. Can you guess where they sent me? This is the Korean War. I went to Thule, Greenland, the top of the world. And I kept saying to myself, I'm trying to keep my mouth shut. They're trying to keep my mouth shut. It's okay, it ain't no problem. I spent a year in two degrees, came back, came back, and then I found out that there is still a lot of discrimination and prejudice. So I said, okay. That was in my mind all the time for anyway. But I couldn't put it together. So I put that together, and in 1963, I went to the March on Washington. I went to the March on Washington, and I listened to everything that was said there, even by Martin Luther King II. I listened to everything that was said, and I listened to what John Lewis said. And like I said, I followed him. I helped as many people as I could possibly help, but I always fought for what I believed in. I always had, I think I always had courageous, a courageous background, and I tried to do the very best I could with the education that I got. Because with the education you get, out of the school, there's another one you get in the background. 
when you're on, by your neighborhood, by your people. It's just absolutely incredible. When I was a senior at Banker High, a guy by the name of Mark Shedd, he graduated from the University of, of uh, Maine, up in Orlando. And he came to me and said, while I was a senior, he said, Jerry, you can't make it. You cannot make it. So I remember Mark Shedd. I'll never forget his name. He was an educator. But he was one that helped me out drastically. Mark Shedd helped me out drastically. My mother and my father. My mother drove the bus, school bus, for kids. She drove that, amongst other things. And my father was a chef at the Bangor House. And he worked there about 35 years. So we, we've always been there, not just me. We have always been there. We've always tried to do the best we could. Please. Please, listen to your family, listen to your parents, and try to find out how you can create a better life and help more people. Do that, do that, please. And do that for me and everybody else. And help, help do that. We all matter. It's not just me that matters. We all matter. And we all cry. Whether you're black, white, whether you're green, red, we're all people. We all mean the same thing. Equality. Equality. Religious. Do that. Do that for me. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us are important. But we're not important if we don't help other people. Whether they're the kids, whether they're adults, whether they're the elderly, please help them out. Something that I have on, the, on my wall in my home. How far you go in life depends on your being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of both the weak and the strong. Because someday in life, you will have been one or all of these. I've always kept that. I've always thought about that. I've always wanted to keep that. I've always wanted to be part of that. It's you that deserves credit. It's you that deserves to be questionable, happy. It's you that are rising, raising your children. It's you that this whole thing is about. Please remember that. Please remember that. I've got so many things to say. <laughs> it's probably better if I don't say it, but I, what I want to do, what I want to do if I can, I want to thank everybody. 
I want to thank everybody I have their names down here. I can't find them, but the mayor of the city of Portland, the superintendent of schools, our education network at the state level, at the state level. Now, because I did that, let me mention another thing. Today is one of we have four daughters, but one of them, Rachel Talbot Ross, it's her birthday. <laughs> Yet today is her birthday. One of the reasons why I say that is because she was the first black woman to ever be elected to the state legislature. So thank you. Since 1820, and I was the first black man to be elected to the legislature since 1820. <laughs> and with that, you could say that, he, yeah, I know that, but it's never quiet. So listen. Let me tell you, let me be thankful to everybody, to everybody, and we're all in this together, and we'll all continue to be in this together. Listen, thank you very, very much. It has been one of the biggest moments in my life, and I know we'll be Tyler, he will see the kids get an education in this school and community. He will get an he will get an education. We will all get an education, and we'll all support that. And that's what I said. And I thank you very, very much. you all for being a part of this ceremony today. Uh, Mr. Talbot, I do have a little gift for you in this bag here to help remember today's event. Here you go. Thank you, Thank you. very, very much. You're welcome. And I also want to let you know that I, I am also a graduate of Bangor High School and I did go to Fifth Street School and my mother worked with your mother. <laughs> So we'll have to show us your stories later, okay? Fantastic! Yes, yes. Um, so anyway, thank you all for being a part of this. Um, naming our school after Mr. Talbot will just be one of your legacies, but it is also encouraging generations of students to not only pursue education throughout their lives, but to get involved with their communities and to make a positive difference in the lives of others just as you have. Thank you all for being here today.